We got that good. Microphone on. Hello, good evening. Can you all hear us? You should be able to hear us loud and clear, hopefully. Um, I know why that's not working. Or do I? Three people watching, so we're not missing anything. There we go. There, and now it's working. Cool. And if I do this, because the font is so small, no one can read it. There we go. That's better. I can't Susan. believe you said I was late. I was, <laughs> I was punctual. <coughs> Mate, I've been saying you were late since about seven o'clock. <laughs> Blimey, there's sound. <coughs> I know, it's because I was here this week. I went, sound, sound. The one time Robin's late, I actually figure out how to set the sound up properly. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so it's all Robin's fault. <laughs> yeah, I'm totally taking blame uh, for that one. <laughs> good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome back to another West UK Weekly. Can you believe this is show number seven? Uh, no. We've made it to. We've survived seven shows without something exploding or us dying or something else going horribly wrong. Um, well, I mean, if we count week one where there was twenty minutes of no audio. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. We, we did. We did all the car crash at the start, didn't we? Yeah, it's lovely. Uh, so we've we've just about got the hang of it now. Um, it's my pleasure to say welcome back, Robin, and he's not wearing a tie today. I'm not wearing a tie. He's learning I'm his told, lesson. He's I, I do have green cufflinks though, like. Stop it, stop it. He's showing <laughs> off now. Yeah. Um, yeah, Susan says, blimey, this sound. Happy days. Can you hear us okay, Susan? Because everything is, IT kit wise, everything has been replaced since last week, except for our fluffy friend. Uh, that's the only thing that's still here that wasn't here last week. Um, so I'm hoping that you can hear us okay. Um, if not, maybe just crank it up a little bit. I tested it earlier and it sounded a bit odd. So I'll have to do some more tests on it, but hopefully you can hear what we're saying. Today, we are talking about... I was going to get something out of my drawer, but it's not there. <laughs> Your drawers are over here. I know, right? <coughs> yeah, it's a bit echoey. Yeah, it is a bit echoey in here, actually. Um, that's that's my next plan, is to do something about that. That starts sticking foam all over the walls. Okay, um, next time someone comes out, it's just covered in, like, um, egg... <laughs> egg no, another egg cartons everywhere. Sod off. Um, go slightly more high-tech than that. <laughs> Spray foam out of wicks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All over the walls. Um, today we're talking about money. Uh, in fact, for the whole month of March, we're talking about money. Mm. Uh, do you know how hard it is to find an accountant who wants to come on and be on YouTube? Really? Yeah. I asked quite a few and they were like, nope. Wow. Some said yes and then no at the end. Some said don't know, can't make it. A um, bit difficult. The, the delay in messaging. Yeah, a bit echoey and the delay in messaging across a while. Okay. Mm. Yeah, I can imagine that. The joys of YouTube. Yeah, uh, exactly. So yeah, if I'm if what I'm saying is echoing, then they might hear an echo a few seconds later as well. So they get the ten second delay in what we're saying, and then maybe another ten seconds is another echo. Wow, that's going to sound fun. <laughs> let's just not say hello, hello, hello again. Yeah, yeah. Let's not say that three times. But it's rich. You got an echo. Um, today we're talking about money, and we're talking about getting paid. It's it's a subject that's a very sore subject for a lot of freelancers, small businesses, and a lot of people who um, depend on efficient uh, getting paid efficiently. It, it's it's a very critical, very sore subject, and people don't really like talking about money either. Um, they, they don't you're right? Because when it comes to um, talking about our wares, it's always like, oh, and I got to talk about money. Oh, it's awkward, and you try to like gloss over it um oh your message come from yeah that's because of uh, youtube's delay there's about a 10 second delay each way mm. that's about if you keep if you make the lag any smaller than that it starts going weird at the viewer's end and i guess also it stops if some more to type something inappropriate you can place it yeah it does allow it does allow us to add certain viewers as moderators so if people are being a bit naughty people like susan can give them a slap ah, cool um, anyway so yeah back to back to money and <laughs> Mm. It's one of those things we don't like to discuss. Um, we feel awkward. We feel that it's inappropriate. And unfortunately, we live in a world where people kind of need to know how much stuff is going to cost. Yeah. <laughs> um, so. But not only that, it's not, it's not even just about knowing how much something's going to cost. It's, it's more asking for money. Yes. Uh, you know, it's all when it, people don't like saying what something costs or telling someone how much they want to charge them because they feel they probably feel a little bit shy about it mm -hmm. 
Um, going back to last week's subject on imposter syndrome. I bet the two. Oh, totally the, two the two are probably very, very related. Um, people are scared to say how much they want for something because they're worried the other person might go, how much? Uh, which for me is the case of well, if you're saying how much, then see that. <laughs> Let me tell you all the reasons why it's that much. Well, um, well also you're forgetting they could go, is that all? <laughs> yeah, I've had a few of those. I've had a few of those. Um, but one of the things people don't like doing is asking for a payment. Mm -hmm. uh, when and quite often you'll find a lot of people will shy away from asking for money to the point where they will expect the person to say to them once the job's finished, okay, how much do I owe you? Yep. And then when that doesn't happen, then they feel even more sort of inwards, uh, introverted if you like, mm -hmm. to say, well, or, I don't know, they haven't paid me yet, at what point should I ask for my money? Yep. Uh, so getting paid is a big problem for small businesses. Five viewers online, say hi, don't just let Susan be the only one waffling away. Um, Susan would never waffle away. No, Susan fun. doesn't waffle. Um, I would never say that to her face anyway. <laughs> don't. Susan, <coughs> if you feel like typing expletives, please no. do. I'll, I'll look, I'll watch him in panic as he tries to delete she it. She can type whatever she likes. YouTube aren't going to censor it, neither am I. <laughs> That's the whole point of it. I've told YouTube this is not a show for children, so they should all be in bed by now. Um, so, yeah, the rest of you, say hi. Just drop your name in. Um, I haven't seen Pete Brasser for a little while. Um, hopefully he's doing all right. Um, so, yeah, asking for money is something that a lot of businesses really don't, a lot of people don't feel like doing. Ooh, I can't, I, I can waffle. Yeah, she can. Um, but it all makes sense. Um, so, what the hell? See what you've done, Susan. You put me off now. Um, so, yeah, what we're talking about tonight is getting paid on time every time. Mm -hmm. um, I want you to learn from our mistakes and hopefully not too many of Robin's mistakes. Well, you've made loads uh, of mistakes. Yeah, I mean, we've made plenty of mistakes in the past and some of the things that we've got people who still, still owe us money now from over 15 years ago. What? Yeah, but you know, we, you just sort of let it go, don't you? <laughs> you just say, well, we're never going to see that person again. Um, funny enough, one guy I can remember vividly drives a Ferrari. <laughs> Went round his house, did a buttload of work. Um, it's okay. Time to pay up. I said, he said, oh, can I send you a direct, uh, can I send it to your bank later? I said, yeah, okay. That's the stupidest thing I've ever said. I should have said, no, more payment now. Computer's yeah. fixed now, payment now. Um, so one of the, th yeah, so asking for money is something people just, they, they shy away from it because they feel, some, some people might feel like it's being rude. Um, can I have some money, please? Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's one thing that a, a lot of business owners really, really need to get over. Um, and once you step out of your comfort zone and do it once or twice, you really do realise how actually the person who's had your service was waiting for you to say that all along. Yeah. And we, if you haven't asked them for money, you almost leave them a bit surprised. I'm like, well, don't you want paying for this then? Yeah, exactly. What's the deal? Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things we're going to cover tonight is how to avoid this even happening in the first place. Um, and hopefully it should be in a way that you might not even need to ask for money. It should just be... Um, seamless. Yeah, there you go. Seamless. I like that word. Um, so, what's what I want to know is, what's the longest, all five of you watching this, what's the longest you've ever had to wait to get paid? Um, when you, Whenever you've done a, a job for someone, how long have you actually gone? Or has it actually gone to the point where you didn't get paid? But what's the longest time you actually had to wait to get paid where you did actually get paid eventually? Uh, what would you say yours is, Robin? I feel really bad now, but um, <laughs> two weeks. Two weeks? But that's because... <laughs> You're going home, mate. You're no good. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's because, what I, you know, the joys of learning. That's why... Um, a month, says Susan. Yeah, that's, wow. That's, uh, if, you're in a, if you're in a day job... Um, that's probably the norm these days. Like if you're work, if you're an employee, yeah, you get a month. Like a you month get paid is, a month in arrears. Yeah, a month is the norm. But as a freelancer and run your own business, I think the longest I've ever waited to got got paid was nine months. Um, just someone who, who had a hosting account and they didn't pay the bill, so we suspended the account after a week. And that web that website says stayed suspended for nine straight months. Which we don't mind because it's got our logo yeah. and branding all over it and our links all over it. So anyone who's going to their website seeing our stuff. Um, but literally nine months later, we got a phone call from the person saying, uh, is there any chance you've still got my website? Uh, I need every to, chance. I need to reactivate it. And we were like, yeah, of course. Um, but There's obviously there was a bit of a fee on top of that. Um, mm -hmm. Sort of like a day rate for turning your car away and storing it. 
Yeah. Um, so the reason I've got two weeks is, um, and I need to change a little bit, is when I engage people, two weeks ain't bad. Yeah. I send them a letter of engagement, and in that I've got a um, letter of engagement which says what I'm going to do. It says how much it's going to cost, and then in my terms and conditions, which also go, uh, so every two weeks. Right. Um, now that might change, but the point is, I also remember to remind people in the nice possible way, saying, reaching the end, just to remind you it's going to fall due right. for the next few days, so that people don't um, go over. And also, mm. I've kind of articulated my T's and C's that there will be repercussions. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, don't put a photograph of a baseball bat in there, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that has kind of helped me. Um, but I think that's where we kind of having the conversation about money at the start mm. means that there's less of a do all the work and then go that place. Yeah, it, yeah. getting paid should be part of the process, not something that you wait wait until the end to try really. and deal with. And another way <coughs> you know, I've seen as well and I'm trying to use is a sort of up front, up front um, Try and like, say that on a few, after a few beers. I know, Dolly. <laughs> Full on font. <laughs> a upfront payment, mm. especially when I'm organising workshops, and then the bands to follow. Because that means if someone's going to pay me a percentage that covers my costs, I'm, my time is obviously one that I want to use effectively, mm. but also means that they know that they're, they've got skin in the game. Yeah. If, there's, if they only pay you after you've done it, there is no skin up that they've got involved in it, and it could just be that, that okay, we'll never value it. Well, exactly. If someone if someone's deadly serious about uh, about employing you and taking on your services, they should be willing to commit to that upfront and prove it to you. Yeah. Um, and if they're not, then they're, they're obviously not serious about it. Mm -hmm. No matter all, no matter what you've signed upfront, until until the flow of currency starts happening, uh, you know, there's got to be a sort of like, okay, well, let me know when you want to get started. Mm -hmm. Um, so, yeah, I mean, one of the things that triggered this for me was a recent article. Yeah, so what, did, what did trigger this for Well, just about everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying I'm easily triggered, but triggered! <laughs> You've only got a sneeze now. <laughs> um, one of the things that actually brought this up for me was a recent article um, I spotted in the Times. Uh, I'm not a Times reader, so don't start all that. Someone linked to it on, on Twitter. Uh, and I saw it and I was like, yeah, or a shame on you, it's Bombardier. Yeah. The company that make planes and trains. Yes. Um, two of my favourite things. And um, they're not very well known. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> they're not very well known for. Um, sorry, guys, something's come up, needs a bail, catch up on replay. No problem, Susan. Yes. Thank you very much for coming along. Um, hopefully, we'll, um, we'll catch up with you soon. Have a good evening. And um, yeah, one of the things that, that triggered this for me was Bombardier. And they had a recent. Thing in the news where they took 223 days to pay one of their small suppliers. Wow. Now, if you look at something like, where was it? Uh, if I can get it here. This was a recent article in the, um, the Times. Why is that not doing that again? It's happening again. He's gone funny. He's got bugs. I know, we've got bugs in the system tonight. There we go. Yeah. Right, so there's up on the screen now. <clears throat> so I was, you know, going about my business and I spotted this on, on Twitter. Someone posted a link to this. Now I sit and had a read of it. Obviously the Times want you to start paying to read the rest of it, so I just Googled it and read it elsewhere. As you do. Um, but you <laughs> and I'm not paying the Times to read their stuff. We were just all about getting paid for do your work. I know, right? But I'm not paying them. I didn't ask them to write it. Um, so if you look online and you type in Bombardier, um, and maybe the word late payment, you're going to have a lot of reading material. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not a company well known for paying people on time or efficiently. And the, the Small Business Commissioner's Office, um, he's basically, he's not very impressed. Uh, and he had to step in and say, look, get your hand in your pocket and pay these guys. Okay. Uh, and if that happens, then you know, you know things are going really bad. Uh, so this is the uh, smallbusinesscommissioner.gov.uk website. You can find it on there actually. It's quite a lengthy article that you can read. So, so there's a commissioner of small businesses? There is. Yeah. There's a commissioner of small businesses. Um, 
Why would you worth say to him? <laughs> well, yeah, his name's Philip King. Um, yeah. <laughs> if you ever want to get in touch with him, and this was published uh, 13th of February, yeah, just under a month ago. Mm -hmm. So Bombardier have been a bit naughty, um, making people wait and suffer to get paid, which is really unfair. Um, I mean, how long could a small business expect to survive if they were waiting on, say, five, ten thousand pounds? Well, exactly, and, and because smaller businesses tend to have one or two very large clients, and if you land someone like Bombardier, I'd imagine it will take up quite a lot of your capacity. Mm. So there is always that fear of what if the client relationship ends, but the other piece is obviously what if they don't pay me. Yeah. Because um, that can have such huge uh, hit on cash flow that you know it can be like of well, being melodramatic life or death. Well, All yeah, because if you're do if you're working for a company like that, um, obviously there's a certain amount of um, what's the word? There's a certain amount of pride, if you like, as being able to say that one of your customers is a big company like mm -hmm. Virgin, Bombardier, or or any of those big companies that you can think of. Yep. It's nice to be able to walk around and go, oh, so and so is my, one of my customers now, or I'm I'm doing a job for this company, um, but. Like you said, that, those sort of companies can be quite demanding and they could take up half of your time, more resources uh, or, or more. And if you, as we recently discovered, one of the guys at BBN lost a, a big customer of his and it probably took up more than half of his uh, business. So if you lose a customer like that, you've got to, uh, you know, you're scrambling and you it's all emergency stations. Yeah, which you, and to that point, you're right, is that if you have a client who's been taking up a lot of your time, because they're a big client, other things like making sure the pipeline is as full and rich as can be, kind of goes down by the wayside, and then something yeah. like this happens, and you're like, <gasps> "What do we do? What do we do?" Yeah, well, you almost start taking it for granted. Yeah, um, well, they're providing plenty of uh, lovely income, so we don't need to go out in the world and shop around too much. Um, so your your clientele base, if you like, would pro would be quite likely to sh either shrink or just not grow. Yep. Um, and you get a bit dependent on them, which isn't a good position to put your business in. No, exactly. Um, but it's it's understandable when you're a small business that you do you can, depending on the nature of business, end up in a couple of key clients. Mm. The Bombardier thing is actually quite interesting because I have forgotten, which is annoying, but I do believe <coughs> that there is some you legislation. Forgot I know. No, never. But there is some legislation coming along, which I think it may be the result of this, or it's timely. Happy sense about the fact that their larger companies and some ways excessive payment terms are actually really impacting small businesses. Yeah. It might be some of I think the FSB are involved in, <coughs> but I know it's something that is actually a point now that's kind of gone up into government, kind of going, this is something that isn't right uh, and it is in, f in fact impacting business. Indeed. Uh, I mean, even even it says here that um, Bombardier were on the understanding that it was a 60-day turnaround for payments. <laughs> so, well, if you understood it as 60 days, why did you wait 223? Oh, exactly. It's um, ridiculous. You know, talking about payment terms... 223 days late. That's insane. So that's 223 days after a 60 days SLA? Well, I'm going to take that as 223 days late. So okay. I'm going to add that to the 60. Yeah. Because if they say it should be 60 days, and then they pay it 223 days late. That's it's, all, yeah, it's almost a year waiting for your money. Yeah. Um, if you exclude a few holiday weeks and stuff, which and is absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, exactly. And as um, a small business, I think that's where historically, and maybe it's, I like think it's changing, mm. that larger businesses can go, right, we will pay you when we decide. <laughs> and yeah. smaller businesses are going, okay. Whereas action, and the problem with that is that from a relationship perspective, you may feel less inclined to do the work as quickly as possible. Yeah. Uh, or it's like, well, if I'm not going to be paid for this long, um, it's going to cause more stress and anxiety. And it should actually be a relationship where it kind of goes, right, what's your payment terms? Okay, these are ours. And how do you actually meet a happy medium? Get them together. So even if they still say, was well, paid every 60 days, say, well, okay, well, we expect then a prepayment of a percentage um, and then the payment uh, at the end. Because that's going to help you a lot more with your cash flow. Mm. Um, and it means that you're 
they are aligning with what they promised. Yeah, and there are a lot of big companies that are trying to do this to the small businesses. Mm -hmm. um, and you, you can accustom it to big companies trying to sort of bully and shop small businesses into getting what they want. Mm -hmm. um, so what sort of things, um, I, mean, I mean, how does this happen in the first place? Yeah, well, personally speaking, I, it, I think if people understand how it happens, then obviously they, they've got some ground to do something about it and mm -hmm. prevent it. So I think, or actually that's quite the interesting because of your website, which was uh, shown in the corner, you are clearly articulating at the start how much different things will cost. Yeah. Um, and actually it was a conversation I had with someone else and it's something I now need to update on my website. Um, <laughs> But prices was me. <laughs> well, you did mention a month ago, but I never recall. <coughs> um, in a services, professional services type consultancy business, mm. we don't always put our prices on our website. Yeah. Which is a, a first barrier to entry for There's customers. There's a lot of people who don't do that, you know. No. They just leave you guessing. And, and I need to change that because I need to tell people how cheap I am. <gasps> Sorry, reasonable. It's enough about your private life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> So he's a cheap night out at one point and he's, yeah, he's, he's gone. Boom. Yeah. Happy days. Um, but getting back to firstly saying how much are you cost so mm -hmm. your customers know how much. Yeah. When you have the conversation around scope of work and how much you're going to do and, and what they want you to do and when by, mm -hmm. actually articulating that in email and having that in a letter of engagement mm -hmm. and your terms and conditions. And although your terms and conditions may say, Please pay, be, pay me by... FSB have a campaign called Fair Pay, Fair Play. Nah. And also highlighted the Bombardier case. That was yeah. it. Chandra, well done, Chandra. Um, why didn't you say hello? You're sitting there quietly and then you piped up with that. <laughs> say hi. <laughs> but yeah, good point. I did actually spot something from the FSB about that and they and they did sort of um, lean on them a bit and sort of start having a, having a go at them. So pay them, pay them, pay them. Yeah. Don't be horrible. <laughs> um, um, so yeah. you scope the work. And then in the lettering or the email, so I'm saying, great to be working with you. Here's the scope. Mm. Here's my terms and conditions. Also, just to say, these are my payment terms. Just to remind you or draw your attention. And as I've said, I'm starting to do it when I do workshops, is say, okay, can you pay me a percentage up front? Mm. I need to book rooms and stuff. Yeah. But I think it's your expenses, right? Exactly. But also, then they're more minded to go, okay, I've already paid you an element, right? Then it's kind of it, delivery pushes back from them to pay you to you to do the work. Yeah. Um, and then it's so like ping pong, isn't it? Yeah. I've paid you a bit of money. Now you do your bit, and 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 then you ask me, and I'll pay you some more. Exactly. And then the other piece is <coughs> making sure that because a lot of people don't use automated invoicing systems. Yeah. Um, I know I don't because um, I'm old school. I wish you were smiley face. <laughs> <laughs> is that we um, if you're going to do work make sure it's part of your process to actually invoice them yeah. quite soon after and yeah. my yeah. payment turns at the moment two weeks but that feels quite long and actually it's two weeks is that longer. two weeks from when you finish to the time you invoice them or two weeks from the time you finish to the time they have to pay well that is the problem because at the moment it's from the date I invoice which could be a couple of days after I've done the work forget. so therefore yeah. I'm Created my own kind of thing where my cash. Oh, that job I did last year, I better bill them for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's <coughs> about making sure. I mean, the other point, though, the other side to being paid on time is I've had people who have chased me for payment before the payment date is due. What, chased you to give you money? No. Well, I've been a customer oh, and they've gone. Um, or oh, when the shoe was on the other foot. Yeah, can you pay me? I mean, but your work's not done yet. Payment terms are, say, X number of days. Yeah. It's not that day yet. <laughs> yeah, we factor our invoices and get 85% up front. That's a really good idea. <coughs> yeah, that's, a, that's a big chunk of money up front, you know. Mm. Um, that's a hefty chunk. It depends, I suppose it depends how much you, how much the bill's for as well. If the bill's for 100 quid and you're saying, well, okay, if it's 100 quid worth of stationery, because, you know, Chandra does all office stuff. Um, if you need something for your office, then Chandra's the man to uh, whiz it around to your office pronto. So I'd imagine if it's 100 quid worth of stationery, then actually asking for 85% up front, I'd be saying, why aren't you asking for 100%? Because you're ordering goods. Mm -hmm. You're not ordering a service. Yeah. 
um, unless or if it's work or if it's workwear, because I know Chandra does workwear as well, then maybe you're looking to that. I know, right? <laughs> maybe you're looking to cover the costs of your supplies first, mm -hmm. and then uh, maybe fifty percent of the labour. Yeah. And then on delivery, you can say, okay, it just pays for the other half of the labour. Mm -hmm. So I guess it depends on what you're supplying as well as to how you bill for it. But of course, yeah. Um, the 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 how it happens is generally based around people's lack of communication, though, isn't it? Yeah, is probably the, the the most ideal way to put it. Um, people not being upfront with what something costs, or telling someone what it costs and then never discussing it again. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, or you know, someone say, yeah, yeah, don't worry, I'll um, I'll, I'll I'll come around and cut your grass for you and tidy up all your garden. It's forty five quid, and then they never make any mention of it ever again. And then they come along, they do the job, and they go, and you're like, okay, did he not want pain? <laughs> yes. Please. And then, like a month later, you might get you might get an email saying, um, "If you wouldn't mind, if you could just drop the money into our bank account." Oh, there's the email I was waiting for. You know, so 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 sometimes it, it just boils down to not asking. Mm -hmm. uh, some people might feel shy, or like you say, some people ask a bit too soon, and you sort they leave you thinking, "Well, hold on a minute, I guess you the right on." You've just got you. Yeah. You know, if they turn up with a lawnmower and go, right, can you pay it now while I'm cutting the grass? I'm like, well, no, you haven't done it yet. Yeah, I don't know the quality. <laughs> I don't yeah, know yeah. if I'm going to have to go come back and go, excuse me, it's like getting your hair cut, isn't it? You're like, yeah. sorry. <laughs> I, I could understand someone taking a booking fee, because, yeah. you know, especially in the services sector where people get let down a lot, mm -hmm. they might say, okay, like a hairdresser, for example, might, especially these mobile hairdressers, they might take a booking and then the day before someone rings up and cancels and great now i've got three hours of my day i can't earn any money exactly because you've already um, scheduled it and then the problem with that creates then is you don't want to kind of go oh i was busy and now i'm not so yeah. then i want my time go twiddling your thumbs mm, and, that seems not and then it just impact your brand yeah. and stuff i mean i did a stint as a driving instructor a few years ago just as a, a learning experience no intention of becoming one as you do just yeah i just wanted the experience of learning how, how it's because done. they let you fly a plane and like show well, people yeah planes. exactly um I wanted the experience of being able to teach some teach people something a different way. Yeah. I'm fascinated with education and teaching, um, and one of the reasons why I do that with the air cadets. Um, so it was a fun experience, um, and one of the things that I did whilst I was teaching, A, I was the most expensive driving instructor in the whole of South East of London. And, policy is... And B, I never ever took a payment after a driving lesson. They're all paid for in advance, mm -hmm. every single lesson. Yep. Um, and I never ever, and, and it, the terms and conditions were exceptionally clear. You had to give three days' notice to cancel a driving lesson. Or seven, or else seven, they pay. <laughs> it's as if they've had one. Yeah, you got to pay for it a week in advance, and if you if you cancel it more than three days, you lose your money. Mm -hmm. Because unless you can find a replacement. Yeah. If you can find a replacement for that lesson, you can keep your money. Um, and it worked exceptionally well. And people were a lot more mindful of what they were doing to yep. make sure that a they turned up for it and b they paid attention yep um but i never had an empty diary never had an empty pocket um and it worked exceptionally well as long as you make people aware what the terms are and what um how you operate right up front from the day one um you'll find that if you're providing a good quality service people will happily just yeah no problem yep i'll, I'll roll with that you know um so coming on to point number four um what kind of things can you not pay for later afterwards what sort of things would you ex would you expect that you can't pay for late? What would you not get away with paying for late? Sex. This is one I wanted to ask the audience. Chandra, what do you reckon? What do you reckon you would never ever get away with paying for late? What do you reckon if you paid for it late, or there wouldn't even be an opportunity to pay for it late? Obviously, groceries in the supermarket is one of them. You wouldn't walk out of Sainsbury's and go, "Send me the bill. I'll take care of it later." <laughs> That's not going to work. I suppose I'd be in a restaurant. Yeah, you wouldn't get you wouldn't get to pay for a restaurant later or afterwards. Um, what other kind of services could you think? Because it's mostly services, isn't it? You, yeah. can, you can't buy a product unless you buy it on your credit card. Um, but what services? HMRC. Yeah, <laughs> good one, good one. You'd never get. If you, you, I mean, you can pay them late. They're <laughs> just fine. You can if you want to go to jail. Uh, if you want the men in black turning up on your doorstep. <laughs> um, but yeah, what sort of services do you reckon you could pay could not pay for late? Uh, I know booking an airline ticket you could never pay for late. Yep. No pay, no fly. Yeah. Uh, it's a bit like that uh, thing uh, with Pomegas. Um, who? The, the d dating game. 
and little people in a circle, and it goes, no lighty, no likey. It's not Saturday night. But, uh, anyway, back to some well, Yeah, so what services do you reckon you could not get away with paying for late if you really had to? Um, if you, even if you wanted to, you just, you'd never get away with it. I think you're right. Mm-hmm. Airlines, um, HMRC. It's most, um, mostly instantaneous taxis, service, isn't it? Yeah, things like, things like a taxi. Recruitment, really? Would you not get away? Isn't recruitment based on um, they find you candidates, then they bill you for them afterwards? In the same way like a web designer would bill you off. I don't know. Well, I've maybe he's got, maybe um, John was going to tell us, but I'd imagine maybe there's an upfront fee element. Or maybe there's a two-parter to it. I have no idea how that works. So maybe fill us in, Chandra. Tell us how recruitment uh, works. Do you pay up front per candidate or do you pay afterwards once they found you somebody? In which case, yeah. You, well, you, there must be an element of prepayment for them to even be like, okay. Not a clue. Because you may never find the right candidate. Yeah, well, in that case, you've got the wrong recruitment agency. <laughs> True. <laughs> or you don't know what the process is where that you want people to do. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, obviously, buying a product, you'd never, you'd never get away with it. But um, there's there's certain services where it seems acceptable, mm-hmm. and and it doesn't seem to be affected by the amount of money you're spending either. Mm-hmm. Um, because like, for instance, your window cleaner would come along, like Gareth. Yep. And it'll it'll come and go, and you wouldn't even know he's been here, and you come home and see the windows are clean, uh, or he send you a text message saying I've been a house, and that's it, a house. What? But you can't, like, you can't move into the house until you've actually. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, gotcha. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you couldn't. Act, yeah, you can't until the estate agent's been paid. No one's exchanging keys. Yeah, so um, everything has to work that one second. The day you, you get the keys pay, yeah. is the day that everything's paid and settled. Is that it? Yeah. Um, so you said retained retrain, work. Retained work. Get get a third up front, third, third shortlist, and a third when they start. Oh. Okay, so with recruitment, basically, before that person starts working for you. The recruitment agency is paid in full. There's, yeah. z- there's zero balance outstanding for their services. Right. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. That makes sense. Um, but yeah, estate agents, yeah. restaurants, obviously, you would never pay for. Um, after. Although you pay afterwards, you still got to pay before you leave. Yeah, exactly. There's no sort of. Um, they get chase you down. Send straight. me the bill in the post, sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, or you know, so. <coughs> It does. It doesn't seem to matter what the what the amount of money is that you're spending. I mean, a builder as well. To, for typical example, some builders will come and do the job and then bill you in full when they're finished. Uh, they won't even ask for a deposit. I mean, I've had a couple of grand's worth of building work done, and the guy who did it didn't ask to be paid until he was finished. That's he crazy. He went and bought all the materials and everything out of his own money, and then once he was done, he was like, "Come and have a look, see what you think." And I was like, "No, it's rubbish. I'll just pay you for the materials. Off you go." Um, yeah, it was a bad job. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Maybe that's why he did. I go, he was pay me 50% first. Have you seen my garden fence? I haven't actually. It's I've like never a maze. It's like this. Like it's horrible. <laughs> it looks like it was done by Nemo. <laughs> um, and um, so. <coughs> so don't compete on price. That yeah, don't compete is. on price. Yeah, get your, get your. So if he had said to me, you know, pay us for the material or pay us the deposit. I would have paid him a deposit. I was quite surprised he didn't ask for any money up front at all. Um, I'm glad he didn't now. <laughs> After the job he did. So um, there's quite a lot of different industries and a lot of different, like as you said, money. Mm. So why then are smaller businesses to kind of yeah, Chandler says that's dangerous for builders, which is why a lot of them go bust. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, spending all that money up front, especially on jobs that require a lot of materials, mm. like if you do loft conversions or building extensions and stuff where you've got skips coming and going, rubbish to be disposed of, lots of materials to be bought and paid for. I mean, the chap across the road is having his roof done at the moment, and I know I might say spending on the roofing materials because that was one of the things I did when I left school as an apprentice. I think uh, the price may have changed slightly. Yeah, gone up a bit, yeah. <laughs> it certainly hasn't gone down. No, it's only. Um, so yeah, they're spending a lot. You can see the sort of materials they're using every day they're bringing in up there, so they're spending a fair bit of cash. So you'd hope they would have said, you know, pay us in increments. Yeah. Um, but, but it doesn't seem to be affected by the type of job you're doing. But a lot of people say that corporate companies are worse. All right. um, now, one of the worst things, and I made a note of this earlier, so I wouldn't forget it. One of the worst things I've ever heard a corporate company say, and they said it to me, and I basically said, okay, goodbye then. Uh, and I explained to them, okay, if you want your 
fleet of websites hosted, um, you'll need to sign up up front. Mm -hmm. We will bill you for it. Once that bill's paid, we'll rack up the servers and off you go. Yeah. And this, the, what they then said was, yeah, we don't work like that. I was like, well, we do. Yeah. So either do it that way or end off. Yeah. And, and it was just walked away from it, you know. And it was a big job. Uh, you know, you talk about fleets of servers rather than just a website or two. Mm -hmm. um, and we've had estate agents. We, we've got quite a few estate agents so with us now where we've said, so, OK, here's how much all those servers are going to cost per month. Um, and it, before we rack anything up or unbox a single server, this is how much needs to be paid the yep. first month. And they've gone, oh, OK, cool. And if, and they, but then they expect you to sort of do it and then bill for it. Mm -hmm. And then you get a sort of phone call two days later going, have you done it yet? And so, well, no, because like we said, you need to pay an order online. Yep. We raise an invoice for you, which was sent to you by email twice. Mm -hmm. So our system sends it out every night if you haven't paid it. And we say, your invoice is still sitting there waiting to be paid. Once you pay it, then we'll unbox all the servers and rack them up for you. Yeah. Um, and they go, oh, okay. But then they're quite happy because they've had it explained to them up front, like you were saying. Yeah. You're totally up front and payment needs to be part and parcel of the discussion of delivering their services. Yep. Uh, it, it, and it's often people who don't make it part of the conversation that lose out. Um, so, I, 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 you, I think you're right, because <coughs> you gave the example of Bombardier earlier on, mm. is that there is that kind of, we're bigger, <laughs> therefore us. We go, well, yeah. I'm, me supplier, you customer. <laughs> if, if, you, if your process are so very different to mine, then we can have a discussion about how we meet in the middle. Yeah. But it needs to be in a way that you're both constructively happy with the yeah. arrangement. Yeah, if they said 60 days payment and we said payment up front, I mean, we, we don't negotiate on that. Yeah, exactly, yeah. There's, there's zero negotiation. Um, but some companies, depending on what you're delivering, you might turn around and say, okay, pay us in increments for how what, and pay us up front. Yep. So if you're doing a really big job, you might say, well, give us 20% now mm -hmm. to, to get started. Yep. Once we've done a fifth of the work, you can check it and pay the next fifth. Uh, so you've got to break it down. And you can also do stuff like um, success criteria and stuff like that. So your pricing models, you know, can be stuff whereby you reward people for good behaviors. Yeah. Um, so if you need people to pay you on a timely manner, then you can kind of go, well, it's this. <laughs> but if you pay us late, it becomes this. <laughs> yeah. How this and this and this. Y yeah, exactly. That's a good point. And if you're actually. outlining that from the start and people know where the terms of engagement are, mm. um, and also, you know, if you've taken a prepayment, mm. then that comes off the final amount. Yeah. Do you know, oh, yeah, because I've prepaid. Oh, great. Yeah, deposit. And, uh, exactly. And, you know, that can, there's an awful lot of stuff around the whole pricing model that enables people to know transparency. It's all about transparency, to be honest. Mm. Um, and helping people kind of go, right, need to give you the cash. Because that's the thing from a business perspective, is like, you want people to pay you as quickly as possible, and ideally you want them to pay you some of the money up front, um, yeah, so that you can kind of go, right, they are good, because <laughs> you don't want to do all this work, yeah. and then be like, can I have money please? Yeah, like, you want to very quickly find out from the start if this customer is going to be reliable, yeah. and if they're going to mess you about. Um, and that's what any business should be after, is establishing which customers can you depend on who are actually serious and which ones are just there to mess you around yeah. and try and get free stuff out of you. Because the more you spend working for, for, for nothing, the more your paid work is going to suffer. Mm -hmm. uh, and eventually you won't have a business, you just turn into a charity. Yeah. I work for free. I send people bills, but they never pay them, but that's fine. Mm -hmm. So you can't, you can't operate like And a lot of it as well, a lot of companies can feel bullied by big companies. So you should never be afraid to turn around and go, well, actually, no, this is my terms and conditions. Um, I'm not an employee of your company. You're trying to get my company to do some work for you. Mm -hmm. I'm not your employee. Um, so you are coming to me. You need to w work on my conditions. I think that's where being transparent and sort of stuff is in that negotiation type mm. thing where someone says, I want you to do work. Mm. You will be sizing the effort and the time and yeah. all that kind of stuff but it should also be sort of saying and just to draw your attention because mm. it may be different to yours but also be comfortable as like the whole um you're saying about 
price and people holding their breath and stuff. Mm. I've heard it numerous times of that when you kind of go, my price is X, and the person doesn't respond instantaneously. Yeah. If you're not confident around your quality and maybe the imposter syndrome leaps up. Starts kicking in. It's totally you know, I can do a discount. I yeah, people, start, people like, start diving in with money off offers and you're like, well, where did that come from? I was just about to ring him and say yes. Yeah, or like, and you know. And now he's sending me a, a big discount. And you're then sort of saying to yourself, hey, what I was thinking of was what to have for dinner this evening or of just, you know, a must remember They've just said the name John, and that reminds me I've not done something else. Mm. It's like, mm, that's why having him sort of saying, this is what we will do, and you will pay us X, and then we'll do a little bit more. Yeah. And have, we'll you ever, do what? have you ever noticed that with software as well? When you sign up for a free trial or something, and you try it out, um, and then you get a, and you don't pay it, you don't sign up for it straight away because you, know, you want to try it out for a week or whatever their trial period is. And I've had this a few times with bits of software that I use. Um, even Grammarly did it to me. Uh, the, the annual price was like 120 something quid. Um, and I tried the free trial and it was really good. And I, meant, I thought, okay, I should sign up for that. And I forgot all about it. And about two weeks later, they sent me an email saying, if you sign up now, it was like 60% off or 40% off, whatever it was. And it, yeah, it was about $60 to sign up. I was like, oh, good job I didn't remember to do that two weeks ago. That would have yeah. cost me full price. Um, but I mean, like even with free um, trials and stuff, they still ask you for your card at start because they also know. Grammarly don't. No, no, no free trial, no no credit card required. Um, I just love what um, put your terms stuff. of business on the reverse side of your invoice. You have an audit trail of emails. Yeah, exactly. That's such a good idea. I love exactly. that. <laughs> love that thing you're like PTO. Yeah. Pay me by this date. <laughs> Pay up or else. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. We just won't tell you what the or else. Turnover for the or else. <laughs> yeah, and you're right. It's like creating that um, order trail of emails and letters mm. or saying, you know, first reminder, no, here's the invoice. First reminder, mm. second reminder, third reminder. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm quite surprised by the amount of people who are not using automated software to do their billing. So then that's where the problem with how... the amount of... It's a pain in the ass to bill people. True, but I think really that's where my umbrage comes from people chasing too early yeah. is because you, if you use an automated solution you have to actually program it correctly otherwise people well say, no i mean when you raise an invoice for example yeah. when we do any manual work for people yeah but that's someone might say oh, build us a website or do some seo work or whatever uh we create a manual invoice so it goes out as a quote initially yeah customer can log into our, our website and approve it once they approve it they can pay the deposit mm -hmm. We'll do the work and keep updated. Once it's once it's finished, we mark the job as finished. Yep. And it was, and then we set a due date on the invoice. Okay. So that, we'll say right, the invoice might be due a week from now. So what I meant is, I've seen instances where the person's terms and conditions stated, say, twenty-eight days payment, mm. and they've not set up the automated, say zero, I think, does invoicing. Right. So it's then working on a two week period. Gotcha. So that's what I mean, if, you, if you're gonna use an automated solution, yeah, make sure that it's got a match, got a match because otherwise, I'm looking at your, your terms of use, oh, I've got 28 days, because that's what they said in the letter yeah. and all that kind of stuff. And, and I get this later. automated going. Two weeks later saying pay up. Yeah, you're like, and then you're just like, well, I yeah. now feel like you're chasing me. Yeah. Um, or I've had people go, hi, yeah. cash has been up well, there. In fairness, how long after delivery of services would you say is classed as being chased? If well, someone sent you an email the day after the job was finished and said, here, please find attached our invoice. The thing is, if they put down their terms and conditions, saying we... we but should they have to? I mean, how long, how long would you say... I mean, I, when, whenever I've had services, I like to pay someone the same day. Yeah. As long as the work's good and it's done, I'm like right, okay, get it paid. Mm -hmm. I don't even if it says a week or two weeks. Yeah. I don't want to wait that long. Yeah. Just get it paid. It's done. Um, just let them know you're happy with it. But how long should someone have to wait before you sort of feel like you're being chased? Well, I think that comes back to even if it says 28 days. But that's where that comes to the conversation. If people are aware that you, you know, so it's I do this work and I will invoice you within 24 hours. Mm. You personally, as a business owner, need to remember that that's what you've said yeah yeah and keep it uh, consistent and then saying right and then from the date of the invoice there is 
say two weeks or three weeks, whatever works for each business. Mm -hmm. But then it's just how you would, isn't it? Yeah, but it's also having the confidence if someone's not immediately paid you, mm. then as you get nearer your due date, so saying, well, let me just remind them. Mm. It's not a chaser, it's a <coughs> just a reminder in case you miss a it. A reminder is a chaser. Well, yeah, but I don't mean a chaser for payment like pay me now. I'm just reminding you, you still owe me money. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not asking you for it, but I'm just reminding you that you still owe me money. That's sort of a chaser, isn't it? If you're, if you're having to interact with them to remind them about something financial, it doesn't matter how you word it, you're, you're, you're sort of, you're, but okay, you're going, come on, come on, you owe me money. Yeah, but it's better, to, it's better to do that than you've missed payment, I'm now going to get the bailiffs around. Yeah. If you go, well, hang, it was yesterday, but you didn't, I had, it, it comes down to the point how long someone has before delivery of the service mm. and your payment date. Yeah. The longer that is, the more stuff happens in their life. I think it's how you word it as well, isn't it? If, yeah. you say, if you say our payment terms are 28 days, you're probably going to get paid on the 28th day a lot. Yeah. Uh, if you say our payment terms are no more than 28 days, however, invoices should be settled as soon as possible, exactly. then probably a lot more people are going to pay you a lot quicker. Yeah. Um, and not let it stretch to the full 28 days. Mm -hmm. um, so if we could give someone some tips and advice then, um, because I'm just worried we're going rattling on now for 45 minutes. We've not been rattling on um, 45 minutes. I know, right? We have. We have. 47 minutes. Going to your Sorry, yeah, 47 minutes. <laughs> Cheeky sod. <coughs> if we could give someone some advice and tips on how to make sure they get paid on time, every time without fail, um, so that this sort of thing doesn't happen, Set aside your fears and worries and concerns about dealing with big companies because yep. that's, that's immaterial. Mm -hmm. That's just your, what's going on in your own head. Um, you know, payments are expected to be part of the conversation up front. Yep. I had a meeting yesterday with a personal trainer who wants to get their website all up and done, up and, done and dusted. I thought you were going to say a personal trainer for yourself. <coughs> you cheeky I'm not saying that you don't need to go to a personal trainer. Just... What are you trying to say? Nothing. I'll, I'll, you can come and join me as well, eh? <laughs> this is a recession jacket, all right? He's in, he's in training for Santa Claus in the movie. <laughs> it's a recession jacket. I've got extra weight on recession in case jacket. the economy goes down because if I'm too slim, then I wouldn't be able to survive for longer. It's the only way he keeps warm out there without a coat on. Yeah, it's lovely. Um, so, one of the, you know, like I say, put aside what your mental thoughts are going on about how your own services and am I good enough. Put all that to one side. Because uh, your, your services are good enough and you are yeah. definitely good enough. Yeah, if you're having that conversation with the customer already, you're past the point of being good enough. Yeah, they've done the assessments, they've gone, right, they know their chips, or whatever it is. Unless you've hunted them down and are trying to con them into doing something that you can't do, in which case, shame on you. Um, in order to avoid any issues with money, like you say, and like Chandra said, uh, the, the biggest piece of advice I would give anyone is make sure you've got a, a, a very carefully worded and very thorough set of terms and conditions. Yep. Ones that are accessible. And I say that because one of our customers recently, I had to tell them off for this, uh, reconstructing their website for them. And, and I had sent them an email saying, which terms and conditions? Oh, we've got them. They're just here in the, in the office. Right, okay. So when someone looks at your website and wants to book a room in your hotel, um, where do they get to see what they're signing up for up front? Or if they need to cancel. Or yeah, like, okay. exactly. Or, or yeah, if they want to cancel. Like, oh, well, we can tell them over. Right, okay. So then you've got into a communications problem straight away, mm -hmm. as opposed to making those terms and conditions highly visible up front before anyone even picks up the phone, if you like. Exactly, yeah. Uh, you know, let them know what they're getting into. If you look on all the all the shopping websites, you know Sainsbury's, Tesco's, Next, all the, anywhere where you can buy anything online, um, even places where you don't buy stuff online, mm -hmm. they've got them. The term here's our terms of business. Yep. Here's what you're going to get, be getting involved with. So the customer is in no doubt, and not only that, you as a business have got a reference point to say, well, actually, it does state clearly on our website, and on our like Chandra says on the back of our invoices and whatnot, and it, as long as it all matches, of course. Uh, that that's what our payment terms are. Uh, so if you could give anyone a tip, Robin, what, and Susan's going to be kicking herself for missing this because she loves the tips and the top yeah, tip section. Um, if you could give someone a tip, what would you give? What would you give them? A sensory tweet, but bring bring the subject of money up at the start. 
Um, and also, if it's appropriate for your business, you were going to say up flump there, weren't you? Up flump. <laughs> up flump. <laughs> uh, if it's appropriate for your business, take deposit. You can take it off the end bill, but mm. once they've, the person's got <coughs> their flesh in the game, um, then there is that kind of piece of thing. What kind of game are you playing? You keep saying flesh in the game. <laughs> is this week's management consultancy <laughs> twaddle Corporate stuff? speak, isn't it? Yeah, it's really. Um, it's, it's Hunger Games. Uh, but no, the point is, oh God. if someone's <laughs> giving you an element, if you, if I'm asking you to do something mm. and you say, that's great, I'll do it, but I want a X amount up front, mm. if I'm really committed to it, and I understand the value of your service, then I'm happily going to pay it. Yeah. I and, think and a also, deposit should be mandatory. That, yeah. And until that money arrives, you do not do anything. Yeah, you don't lift <laughs> a finger. Yeah. I think deposit should be mandatory for everything. Mm -hmm. Anything from pest control, um, you know, to whatever you can imagine, really. Even a window cleaner. Yep. I don't see any reason why a window cleaner shouldn't say, sure, come and do your windows for the first time on such and such a day. Um, as long as you're one clean ahead, pay, payment wise. Yeah. So that your pay, you leave one. So if they charge twenty quid to clean the windows, you pay the twenty quid up front. Mm -hmm. Then when they've been to clean the windows for for the first time, you pay you twenty quid. Yeah. So you're always one clean ahead with mm -hmm. the window cleaner. Yeah. So that there can never ever be a, an issue of forgetting to pay them. Yeah. Uh, and you know, and as long as you've got a receipt to say right, so and so has paid a deposit. And that's you just hang on to that for the life of however long that window cleaner is doing your job for. Yep. And if you decide to change window cleaners one day, they'll either give you your money back or say, oh, the last clean that we do will be for free. Yeah. Because you paid your deposit. And I like how uh, Shan was just commented saying one of the hardest things is to get Einstein TCCs, which is the yeah. reverse of the invoice at the bottom of your eyes is the best way. I like that because, yeah, if, they, <coughs> you know, if they're not signing your T's and C's, well, T and they're C's, paying you, then they've accepted it because of the fact you stated it. Yeah, T and C's are um, placing an order with you. You don't have to have the T and C's on the invoice, um, but you, you should, by all means, have a confirmation of acceptance of them as part of the order process. Yeah. So if you've got an in, an, an, a work order, for example, let's say you're a contractor yeah. and you're doing a refurbish or, or a loft conversion or whatever, on that work order, the customer should sign to say that they've seen, read, and understood. Not just seen. Yeah. A lot of people just say, "I've confirmed, I've read them." So you should say it should confirm that you've seen, read, and understood them. The terms and conditions under which this work is going to be carried out. Yep. Um, you know, like when you order online, it says, "I've I've seen the terms. Of, I understand." It doesn't say I've read them. It's I understand them. Mm -hmm. And then there's a link to the terms and conditions. And then we all click and do actually. Yeah, so it doesn't say I've read them because yeah. people can say, well, I read it, but I didn't understand it. Yeah. Yeah, You're so actually ticking to say you understood them. Mm -hmm. um, and our, you know, our terms and conditions are ridiculously short. They're in big fonts. So it's, like it's like a kid's book, you know. <laughs> you pay, you play. End of. <laughs> it's the case closed. So what would you say is a top tip? Um, I would say get a deposit for any work up front. Mm -hmm. Any work you're doing, no matter what it is, if you're a builder doing 10 grand's worth of work, break it down into, like you say, actionable chunks. Might be groups, 10 lots of a thousand pound or five lots of two thousand pound. You know, a builder might say, well, I've got to order a thousand pounds worth of materials just to get the roof off of your house mm -hmm. and the scaffolding. Once, okay, fine. Here's a thousand pound for that. Once that's done and the build and materials start arriving, let me know. Yep. Because then you can start to see things happening. Right? Cause, and you see it all the time on TV with Matt Wright and these road traders. And so, well, well, they quoted me 60 grand to do to do an extension, so I paid them the 60 grand. And you're like, oh, no, exactly. you didn't. Well, they you never didn't. saw them again. And they, they, yes. they never came back to do the work. And you're like, well, I wonder why. Exactly. <laughs> so it's it's a really good way of managing quality control as well mm -hmm. and keeping in communication with your customer. If you're doing, even if it's just a simple job, like yesterday's job was just a small rebuild of a website. But I said to the customer, okay, well, we'll take 50% up front. And then 50% when it's finished and you're happy. Yeah. Um, that way you know that halfway through the, the sort of 30 day job, there's going to be a conversation. You're going to be talking to them all the, all the time you're going along, saying, okay, are you happy with this? Happy with that? Yep. Um, we only got a couple of weeks to go, so don't worry. It's, everything's going to be finished on time. And then that's when you, and you can slide into the conversation, and that's when you pay the final bill. Mm -hmm. So that they're staying mindful that they'll owe you money. So also, sorry, process. No, no. Go ahead. <laughs> I love it. Um, do they pay you 
after you press to go live on the website or no. right so you, they once, pay you once they pay you <coughs> good process they see like they it. see we, so we set it up on a development server yep they'll see it they'll have access to view it all day long but there's no login for them to export anything or take it somewhere else. So the second they pay you, so say, it clears, then <coughs> you get the website live. Yeah, once process. they're happy with it, they go, actually, yeah, that looks all great. Yeah. Um, okay, settle the final bill, we'll make it live, create a login for you, and that's part of the finished process. Part of the process, once it's finished, is create a login for the customer and teach them how to use it. And that's a good way also to stop people from forgetting to pay you. Yeah. <laughs> because until they get the service, yeah. it's not like... Exactly. Um, so, you know, any website work we do outside of the hosting stuff is always, always either, depending on how much it is, some jobs we've done for 100 quid because it just takes a couple of hours. Just like that. It's only 100 quid. Pay it up front um, mm -hmm. if you're happy with that and we'll go from there. Yeah. Um, and some jobs we've done for several thousand where we've just said, just pay a bit, a bit now, yep. and, a, and a bit later. Um, depends on what it is, mm -hmm. um, but it, it keeps you in good communication with the customer, and it makes them feel part of the process. Yep. It makes them feel like they're, uh, they can see if if a job takes a month, it's not a case of start a job and then a month later you phone them. Exactly. They yeah. feel like nothing's happened for a month. Yeah. So it's a good way of keeping them involved in it's the like process. It's like chucking something <coughs> on the wall, and mm -hmm. it, like some point later it comes back looking completely different like what that yeah. what i asked for yeah. exactly yeah. so it keeps them involved in the process and it keeps them mindful that the final payment is coming yeah um so that would be my advice and my other advice <coughs> tip two no that's you're on three now at least oh that's great at least oh, on i'm three on fire now. don't say two everyone's gonna be like hang on it's nine o'clock and he's only on number two no um <laughs> is if you someone pays you give them a receipt no yeah. acknowledgements because exactly. I know with my clients especially the first time they pay me I know it's like when I first time I paid someone you triple check the bank account, bank account details mm. but you said that anxiety like did they get the cash it's like when it arrives <laughs> say thank you when they pay the bill say thank you and that yeah. would then helps with people's books going, oh I don't have any bills I was yeah. like also you it, don't protects, have any it protects both of you then because if you inadvertently everything goes wrong in your accounting software Proof of uh, they're like oh no you've already and you're like, oh sorry of course yes I did give you a receipt yeah. rather than you going you never paid me and I go well, yeah. I'm, I'm sure I did well this is what this is why one of the things that I like about using an automated billing system is that you can create an invoice for the full amount but then bill for half of it yep so that it will still show the same invoice with 50% outstanding yep but the final due date will still be a month from or whenever the completion date is expected so that they'll see, they'll see the receipt and they'll see the 50% payment on oh. it. Um, and automated billing systems are so cheap, they're not expensive. I mean, a really, really good one where you can create your own whatever you want, 350 quid would be the worst case scenario you pay. Yeah, and is, is, is that wesh pay? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not wesh pay. So you're joking me, we don't want to get involved with the Financial Services Authority. Oh, yeah. Jesus, no way, it's way too complicated. Cool. Um, but if you know if you're a merchant account with your bank and an automated billing system, and away you go, mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's, it will save you so much aggravation. Yeah. Because then you've got something that you'll never have a customer emailing you ever again to say, "Can I have an invoice?" Because it will send it to them, and if they lose it, they can log in and get it again. Yeah. Any time they want, mm -hmm. even if their computer just blows up, just log in and all their years worth of invoices are there. Yeah. So that's that's one thing I would say to people: if you're not using something that's automating your invoicing then you need to change that yeah um, because this whole man i've seen people now still sending out excel spreadsheets as an invoice and you're like yeah 1997 that was fine <laughs> minor excel you button. can't do that now it's 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 not minor excel but i save them as a pdf so it goes yeah. out as a lockdown pdf yeah but it's you know it, it, you you know a good way of keeping the customer involved in the process is Bring them into your website and say, hey, look, you know, did you know that all your stuff is available to view here? You mm -hmm. can see it any time. Yeah. Because we've got secure messaging built into our website as well. Mm -hmm. So if people query an invoice, they can send us a secure message rather than just an email that anyone can read. Um, yes, so it's all part and parcel. These, these billing systems off the shelf, they, they cost peanuts. Mm -hmm. And if you're saying that that's expensive, then you haven't factored in the cost of running a business properly. Yep. Um, because some people will try and run a business on a shoestring. And yeah, it's not good. Um, one of the other thing, one of the other things, yeah, deposits, incrementals, and terms and conditions. 
Um, don't let yourself be dictated to. You know, a company will say, you'll say, this is how much I want up front, and they'll say, this is not how we do things. And you say, well, I'm not you. You know, don't let yourself be bullied. Um, there are companies out there will try and tell you, this is how we operate. Good for you. This is how I operate. Pay mm -hmm. up. Uh, and if they don't, they're going to give you grief right from the start. Yep. And they, they're not going to pay you under the way you expect to be paid. So you probably wouldn't want to work from them anyway. Exactly. Um, if they're going to talk to you and try and treat you that way, then it, you've really got a question, is it worth it? Doesn't matter what the company or what the brand is, you know, if Nike ring you up tomorrow and say, can you do a job for us? We pay on six month invoices. <laughs> no, <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> Proud of yourself. Yeah. Call us back when you've got your credit card in your hand. <laughs> you know, <coughs> don't care who you are. Um, so yeah, don't let yourself be bullied. Um, anything anything you want to throw in before we wrap up for the evening? Because I'm just aware it's sort of nine o'clock and Chandra's still got, probably got matches in his eyes. Um, no one's asked any questions along the way tonight, so happy days. Um, are you all good with tips and advice? Yeah. Cool. I'll um, obviously put stuff on my website saying thank you for everyone. Obviously, I've got any more ideas hmm. uh, and a link to this. I will surely say, share them out on that post. When you can talk to me. I can <laughs> Yeah. Well, I had a networking thing earlier on. It went really well. So he's, been, he's been talking all day. Yep. Um, there is also, we do make a, uh, we do write up a full blog of every show that's happening. And that goes on wesh.biz. Uh, which is now up and running and live. Um, someone's got a bit of catching up to do with his blog posts. Uh, no names mentioned. Um, so if you want to read about any of the shows, any of the links we've used, any of the references we've we've used, they will all go in the blog posts on there as well. Uh, so Chandra, you've got some catching up to do. You've got a blog post to get in as well. No getting out of it because I'll send you an invoice. <laughs> It'll have the terms and conditions on the back that you didn't agree to. Um, so thank you very much for joining us this evening folks and if you're watching this afterwards on catch up Susan um, don't forget you can also get this as a podcast as well it goes out on all your favorite podcasts in iTunes and play and, and what's the other one the, the green thing Spotify oh. it goes out on that as well by Friday afternoon um, so you've got it in time to listen to it at the weekend what's that why is that one moving and that one's not moving yeah. one other oh, is there Zena yeah Zena Get that bloody podcast, uh, podcast, blog, blog cast pod thing. <laughs> Get it written um, because it's, you're losing out if you don't because it's, it's a wonderful resource to refer people back to some of the experts and wonderful guests I have on the show. So if you want me to write it, then well, you're not going to like what I write. Um, so we've got Wesh.biz uh, and the podcast as well. So there's loads of ways to get involved with the show and catch up on all the wonderful things we're talking about. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. Say goodnight, Robin. Night, Robin. And we'll see you again next week because we are talking about money all month. At the end of this month, we have... Um, we're giving money away. Yeah, and we're not giving money away. No, you almost said yes to that. <coughs> oh, shit. Um, no, at th the end of this month, we've got Paul McCartney coming in. Cool. Yeah, and he's going to be talking about pricing for profit, which is a very fascinating subject that gotcha. I don't think hardly anyone understands. I don't. Um, so we'll see that we'll see that at the end of the month. And um, thanks again, and good night, folks. Good night. Have a good week. <laughs>